The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Atlanta for the OpenStack Summit. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by co-host Stu Miniman, analyst at Wikibon.org. And we're here with Cube alums, Hargul Lai, Senior Vice President, Chief Operating Officer for HP Cloud. Sar, welcome back. It's great to be here as always. Uh, we had, we uh, did last year in Portland, you were on, and uh, yeah, we started to see the groundswell of the HP Cloud. You were instrumental in really building out, laying down the tracks for cloud. Now you got the big billion dollar announcement. And I think I asked you at HP Discover, what are you guys going to do? We need to hear that shot heard around the world, and you said with a little smirk, something's coming, something's coming. So is that, is that, is it, is that the shot? Is that the big aha uh -huh for HP? Was that the news you were referring to? It's the beginning. It's the beginning. I mean, we have obviously, you know, we're very serious about cloud. We've been serious about OpenStack. About 300 people here from HP. Uh, you know, a Hillian announcement. You need to see the Hillian announcement. Obviously, there's been a lot of work to get to Hillian, but that's just the beginning. I think we should see acceleration of our investments, acceleration of what we're doing in cloud, acceleration of our capabilities uh, in the next 12 to 18 months. So I would say Hillian is like a, the beginning of something. HP, you also talked to me about how HP was actively involved in the original eight uh, formation of OpenStack, and we had uh, Monty on, uh, Monty Taylor and Eileen Evans uh, yesterday, I had a great chat. Um, what's, it, what's, what's going on with you guys now? Obviously the participation's there, we see the presence, you guys have huge presence here, both in terms of you know, staff, engineers, and all developers, also your, the cloud team. PTLs. What's, what's the update internally? I mean, this has got good momentum. What's in the internal like? Is cloud, you know, we've always been like, hey, come on, what's, you need the HP cloud. Give us the update on what's happening internally at HP. Are you guys mobilized around cloud? What's the plans? Well, I mean, again, you always, to me, it all comes down to, okay, how many people, who's working, how much you have it, right? So I have, you know, over a thousand people on cloud, you know, way more than I had dedicated to this, way more than we had a few years ago. And so that's the first part. And you, know, you can see that by looking at our contributions, uh, you know, whether it's the fact that we have four PTLs, whether it's the fact that we have three people on the technical committee. Um, and so you know, we're just accelerating our investment. Our view in general, is, you know, we've, we, and we've mentioned this before, is that if, if OpenStack succeeds, HP succeeds. And so we are going to continue to do whatever is uh, in our capability to make OpenStack successful. And I think now we're starting to see things uh, are finally getting there to the point where you know, we're talking about users and, and, and deployments and less about all kinds of architecture and things like that, which I think is really important because ultimately the success or failure of OpenStack will be judged by its usage, uh, not by the amount of press written about it, not by the amount of hype, but how many customers are deploying. And there's lots of customers now that are starting to deploy pilots and so on. So you know, we've, we're, we're spending a lot on HP on cloud. Um, and you know, one of the things you can see was Helion, and we talked a lot about you know, converged cloud, we talked many years about that, and you know, you, can, you need to think about Helion as we finally converged, right? <laughs> That's the convergence. The work that was done in Converged Cloud has now converged into Helion, and so now we do actually have one product line, with one core technology, all that is sort of in one place, and now we're going to leverage that uh, to move even further. Yeah, it's, to use the football analogy, we always like to use sports analogy. You guys had broken from the huddle, you've converged internally, you've settled on architecture, now the team's essentially executing. What is the, what is the vision for the plan? I mean, you know, West Coast offense, if you will, but is it like multiple fronts, is it public, and then enterprise? Because Helion kind of teases out a little bit of both. You have, you know, obviously open source contribution, and then you have the enterprise focus. Yeah, I mean, I think, look, first of all, we are focused on enterprise and service providers, right? We're not focused on the super cheap, you know, I want, you know, one cent storage. Um, you know, I think public cloud is a bit, a bit of a misnomer. I think at the end of the day, you know, really it's about consumer build. And, you know, we are focused on giving customers solutions for both consumer and build in a hybrid context. And we believe we're just at the beginning of that whole transition. And, when you th and, and we're focused on providing solutions for that. We believe ultimately the best solutions will be based on an open source stack, whether that is OpenStack, whether that is Cloud Foundry. And so we're making huge investments in that area. 
and we're making huge investments with our customers uh, to be able to help them get on that journey to the cloud, again, both in a build context and a consume context. And you know, we have a large business across both of them, but, part of, but you know, we're focused in helping our customers make that transition from sort of the scale up world to the scale out world. Sar, can you give us a little bit of insight about what it takes to build that, that HP cloud? You, know, you talked about scale, um, you know, there's I mean, a lot of effort to you know, just build that infrastructure, maintain it, operationalize it. Um, talk to us a little bit about how it is to build that and you know, how does OpenStack fit into it? Is all your cloud OpenStack or you know, what pieces are today? Sure. Well look, we, we've had cloud, and we've talked about this before, we've had cloud at HP for years, starting with cloud system and CSA many years ago. We've had a lot of organic activity, and over the last few years, we've sort of been pivoting more and more to leveraging OpenStack, uh, both from a build perspective and a consume perspective. And you know, we've, we, we broke our teeth uh, you know, deploying public cloud on OpenStack from Diablo, that was very interesting. Uh, the good news is we learned a lot, and a lot of those lessons I keep on emphasizing are being put into our Helium distro. Uh, and you know, we're at different levels, but over time, right, most of our cloud efforts will be based on OpenStack. Today, our public cloud, you can get Cloud System 8, sorry, on private cloud, you can get Cloud System 8 with OpenStack today on it, and we have a lot of deployments uh, with that. Obviously, our public cloud is running OpenStack. As we said in Helion, uh, we will be deploying a lot of our Helion distros on our uh, uh, managed cloud ES footprint, so we're going to be doing that as well. And over time, we will be migrating a lot of the solutions that aren't based on OpenStack to OpenStack as well. But you know, look, you got to provide customers the solutions they want. A lot of customers still have a very large part of their uh, application footprint on scale-up solutions, and we're there to support them. We have one of the best scale-up solutions in the world with Cloud System and with CSA, uh, but we are also going to be helping them man uh, migrate to the scale-out world. And most, what most customers are doing is you know, they're keeping their scale up and continuing to invest there, but they're building a scale-out infrastructure to write their new apps on. And so we're there you know, to help them across that bridge. And part of our me hybrid message is the fact that you don't have to jump. You can do both. You can have you know, apps that some of them live in the scale-up world, some of them live in the scale-out, and we can provide you management, instrumentation, and solutions to help you manage that. So can you walk us through a little bit, you know, over the last two years since Diablo, what have you learned? How much of that has been you know, brought back to the OpenStack community? And just as a cloud provider yourself, uh, share with us a little bit of that, that, that journey. Um, hmm, I don't know if we have enough time for that. But <laughs> the, look. There's multiple parts, right? First of all, you know, scale was not really there, right? I mean, we had to do so much things uh, just to get things running at scale. You know, when you do things at scale and performance, everything breaks one by one. You always find the weakest link. So there was a lot of weakest link activity that we had to run through. Um, resiliency wasn't there at all, right? I mean, in terms of monitoring, right? One of the beauties of a cloud is that, you know, there's monitoring, so when something goes down, you know it went down and you can do something about it. So instrumentation, uh, really not there. Installation, which is not so much for public cloud, but was not there at all. One of the reasons you know, we now have come up with a distro based on upstream is because we finally managed to get the proper installation technology as part of Triple O, uh, which you know, Robert Collins uh, from our group is driving. And so that wasn't there as well. So a lot of things that are sort of like things that are more mature, I mean it's normal, it's a maturity issue, but a lot of things where mature technologies already went through that, we're just not there in OpenStack. Uh, on the other hand, OpenStack is very flexible, so it has capabilities. We're still working through Neutron. I mean, Neutron still has issues. You know, as long as you're doing flat networking, everything's great, but you want to do more sophisticated things, uh, we got some work to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious on the operational side. Uh, one of the stats you know, we, we've quoted and many people have is you know, Facebook can manage you know, 10 to 20,000 nodes with a single administrator, typical enterprise somewhere between, you know, if they're good, three to 500. Um, you know, what do you see from both the public and private offerings that, that, that HP offers? What can we do? Well, the first thing I think that's important to understand is Facebook runs one app, okay? Agreed. They have a very homogeneous <laughs> solution. It's very different. Um, I think we should be able to get Few thousands, depending on the complexity of the apps you're running and the diversity of the base. Uh, but I think the, the, the area that we're focused on right now is the ability to just install it, run it, uh, and without having to babysit. And on our public cloud, you know, we run very, very large, thousands of nodes, but I also have a staff of people that is watching over it and taking care of it, and I think there's more work to be done in OpenStack. One of the reasons, for example, that we released um, our community edition now of Helion and our more scalable commercial edition is a few months out 
is because even though we finally got uh, Triple O working and everything to get it done at scale and reliability that enterprise expect, uh, we need a few, some more soak time because after all, Ice House only came out three weeks ago. And so that's the kind of things that we're focused on. But you know, I have no, no uh, concerns that OpenStack will get there. Uh, but really now, finally, I think as people are doing more things with OpenStack, we're finally pivoting to the level where there is a focus on those key things that are actually about what is it to operate, right? Forget about, okay, I can run a cloud, congratulations. What is it to operate at scale? What is it to operate it with a small staff without an army of developers, right? And success will be when we have enterprises that don't have an army of developers adopting OpenStack. And I'm um, you know, convinced that we will see that in the next 12 months. Sorry, people are talking about like the big vendors now in here, and the big debate yesterday we had on CrowdChat was, can it grow organically um, as a community, or do you need a leader to come in there? It was, it's split almost 50-50 down there, and you know, most ecosystems need leaders, and, and obviously IBM, HP, huge players, Red Hat uh, are in there. I mean, it's some big, big, big money in there, big muscle, big contribution. So um, everyone's always worried about, is HP going to fork OpenStack? And that's kind of not, not worry, but that's on their mind. And, and, and we, people have been addressing it. So what's your take on that? How do you talk to the folks out there and say, uh, what is HP's intentions? Uh, are, <laughs> is, that, is that something that always gets kicked around? So why don't you address that comment? Yeah, so I think, uh, look, if you, you have to judge us by our actions, and our actions are to put more and more people contributing. I mean, we have four or five PTLs. Uh, we have a lot of core folks on the technical committee, so uh, we believe that the right way to move OpenStack forward is to push the OpenStack within the system, not from outside. And so, you know, we don't, agree, you know, forking would be a failure of OpenStack. I think that the the key is to have the the people who are driving OpenStack be focused on what customers need and not be focused on interesting, cons you know, ideas that are just experimentation. And so. Uh, I think, you know, you heard some of that also from uh, our friends at Rackspace and so on. I think as more and more customers start deploying, I think the natural gravity will push people to focus on the things that customers care about. Before, when there were less customers deploying, we could all have nice academic and opinionated discussions about what's important. But if we actually have customers, they actually know what's important because they're using it. And so we actually feel good about OpenStack in the last uh, you know, few releases. We do think that it's starting to coalesce around what are the important things for OpenStack to be successful. And it's, again, it's just based on customers. The more customers, the more people who are using OpenStack that I see here, the happier I am, because that will drive it you know, to a good, healthy ecosystem. And so far, you know, we think uh, that is the right way to do it. And you know, we have no intentions of, 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 of any forking. You know, our intention is to work within the community part of which we built uh, to make that happen. And Eileen mentioned some of the governance things yesterday, it's pretty smooth there, good harmony, so to speak, good balance, I mean, there's always you know, uh, conflict at some level, but there's still some good trust there. Well, I mean, look, it's a very uh, active ecosystem, right? If you don't want any conflict or any discussions, I can give you a dead ecosystem with no check-ins and nobody cares, right? I'll take the, some of the issues in OpenStack, some of the healthy debates, because I'm getting innovation for it. So I'll take it. I mean, we got to be on top of it, but you know, it's, it's healthy to have that as long as in the end you, you get a better solution. And again, you're focused on the customer use case, yeah. not on some archaic technical argument. Yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, IBM was in the same position there. Their view is similar to yours. Hey, if OpenStack's successful, they win, you win. So that's clear. Uh, let's talk about customers. One of the things that we're always looking for here, and we don't see a lot of it because either they're quiet, don't want to disclose it, but there's just not a lot of customer discussions. So I hear hallway conversations coming down the escalator, oh, POC with so-and-so. So what are you guys seeing from your customers? What are some of the activity levels? If you can name names, that's great. If you can't, then, then just talk about some of the use cases and some of the environments that you're executing in. Sure, I mean, I'll, I'll talk to you at a broader level. You know, last year, there was, you know, two years ago, people thought, thought what is this OpenStack thing? Is it the right thing, the wrong thing? And then last year, people started saying, you know, maybe I should do a POC. This year, I don't have enough capacity to support all the POCs that people want to do. And you say, well, what, is, what are they doing? Okay, so the classic use case on an enterprise is, you know, they have their traditional apps, and they've cloudified them to some extent, you know, VMware, scale up stuff, was dedicated hardware. They've got self-service, but they know that to really achieve you know, the scalability and the velocity that cloud proclaims, they're going to have to do you know, a scale-out solution. And so most of the customers that I talk to, and we're talking you know, Fortune 50 companies, big banks, uh, very large companies, they're basically looking at building a scale-out cloud in-house and then starting to develop their next apps, their mobile apps, their next generation apps on top of that cloud. And what you're seeing right now is that they are they're doing POCs, RFPs, pilots around that. 
Uh, you won't hear the big stories yet because I think we're in the middle of it, but I'm sure next year we will have some bigger stories. The other part of it is some of this is tied to the velocity of developing these new apps. Um, right, because again, these are, these are clouds that are very different than the clouds that existing apps are on, and as we all know, uh, you can't just move apps as it is, and so you've got to develop new apps, or at least develop components of new apps that will then tie back through a hybrid mechanism to their old apps. But I'm seeing a lot of that, um, a ton of that, and I think those will be the things that are going to be in production next year, and even then, though, it's going to take some time. It's an adoption curve, again, it's tied to the app. We were talking yesterday about is it a product or a platform, and, and you know it really is a platform. There's so many use cases to innovate around. As long as there's a st core, stable community, it seems to be going well. So, so, th so with that in mind, what are some of the verticals that you see adopting um, this now? I mean, obviously, we talk on the Red Hat guys, and they're saying they're seeing financial services. You know, it's now cool to bring open source into the enterprise. So, what, what areas, do you, verticals, do you see? Uh, kicking the tires and rolling out some heavy-duty OpenStack. I see it across the board, but obviously financials because they have a lot of workloads and also they're always looking to, to improve their speed. I see uh, e-commerce, a lot of e-commerce. Government, a lot of government. Government loves open source, especially people who like to look at the source, right? <laughs> um, big transportation companies, um, you know, I don't, I, you know, it's, it's pretty much across the board. Um, you know, and again, a lot of the applications, some of them have very specific applications, but many of them, it's part of their overall view of their transformation of their IT. And this is what people need to understand. It's not about, oh, I heard about OpenStack, so I'm going to deploy OpenStack. It's no, I want to transform uh, my current system to a more cloud-oriented scale-out system. I want to get that level. I want to get those efficiencies. I want to get that velocity. And now I have to make a choice of a cloud platform, and so I've chosen OpenStack. It's not on, it doesn't stand on its own. It's part of an overall transformation. But that's also why these things take longer, because these transformations don't happen overnight. It's not, it's not like deploying a new app. It's a whole transformation. But I can see, again, financials, transportation, um, e-commerce, people who are saying, you know what, we need to transfer that. We need that velocity. Uh, how can you help us? And yeah, we've decided that OpenStack is the right platform just based on looking around, and now how do we go about doing that? So, Sir, I want to get your take on something. If you look at hybrid environments, one of the challenges we have is even if I have similar infrastructure or even similar virtualization in my, my environment the customer owns and where I go to, the way they're configured tend to be pretty different. How important is it in your mind that we get um, I don't know, it's not homogenous, but you know, the, the kind of same, same building blocks or same architectures in, in both sides of whether it's my environment or you know, my, my service provider or cloud provider. Sure, well, first of all, I think there's uh, misconceptions about hybrid, right? Hybrid means many things, right? Mm -hmm. the, in the very basic view, hybrid is, oh, I can move my workloads around, right? Turns out that's not the prevalent use case. The prevalent use case is, I want to build a composite app with a system of uh, engagement in one place and a system of record in that place. In that case, it doesn't, they don't have to be uh, homogeneous. It can be very heterogeneous. In fact, you can have a scale out model connected to a scale out. That's how a lot of people build mobile apps. Um, in the case where you do want a, a burst with yeah. VMs. Or, or a, federated applications, yeah, right? Uh, well, yeah, which is common. Um, you have to have certain layers that are the same. It doesn't have to be pure, but you have to understand your service layers and your interactions, your APIs, and there you do have to have some consistency. And you know, I think we're getting there. It's not perfect. I think it's still at the point where you have to actually look at it before and there's actions in the world. So I think we're getting there. But I don't think you need exactly the same architecture. I think you know, that's, the whole idea of cloud is to um, abstract. And so that would be you know, going counter, counter, intuition, counter to what cloud's all about. But you know, like anything, you need some API consistency. So I asked the question that the uh, Helium announcement didn't get the answer on CrowdChat I was looking for, so I'll ask you here. How are you going to spend the billion dollars um, in terms of, is that code, is that for coders, is that for evangelism, is it for outreach, is it for staff? Can you kind of give us a high level kind of breakdown of, of sure. how you guys are going to deploy that funds? So I can tell you at a high level a few <laughs> things that will then let you think about it. <laughs> I'll, we'll connect the dots. Right, so you can the, connect the dots. Yeah. <laughs> um, first of all, HP is a very conservative, HP lawyers and finance are very, very conservative. So, you know, we're probably spending a ton more, but we could only state this because it could be, you know, deduced in this way. But we're spending way more if you look at our overall thing, including data centers and so on. So when we talk about this, you should be thinking and you look at our investment and how many people we have contributing to OpenStack, uh, how much we're in the market, how much we're doing that with Cloud Foundry. You should assume 
we are dramatically increasing our investment in the R&D aspect of things. I'm not going to tell you that's where the billion is. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, you know, people like said, oh, well, this is very small if you think data centers. They're right. But again, HP is very conservative in what we can report. So um, in general, right, we, when you see how much we're hiring, you should think there's a big R in that. There's a big R&D in that number. I can't get into the details, but there's a big R&D in that number because in the end of the day, um, if you want to make open source successful, you have to participate and be part of the community. And we're investing um, you know, very, very heavily there. So it's not a big bag of money to the foundation saying, here's a billion dollar donation. It's really more of your investment, HP's investment, into the efforts of OpenStack and the community. Correct. Like, you know, one of the things we said, I believe was said during Helion, but if not, is like, you know, we're going to focus a lot on upstream, right? One of the reasons we, the way we're, you know, the difference between Cloud OS, which was done before uh, some of the maturity in OpenStack, yeah. to what we have today um, with Helion, is that Helion is, by definition, is defaulting to upstream. Okay, that requires a lot of people to do that, yeah. right? Um, and so definitely, you know, you're going to see, you know, I think we're number three or number two, I think, in Ice House. Uh, expect that number to rise. Expect us to have more reviewers. Reviewers are actually more important than code contributors. Uh, you know, we already have three, four or five PTLs. Expect us to have more. And again, it's not because we want to dominate. It's because we have an agenda. We want to make OpenStack mature. Uh, we want to be able to get OpenStack to the point where enterprise don't think twice before adopting it. So, Sar, you know, everybody knows HP, you know, leader in infrastructure, you know, server, storage, networking, you know, towards the tops of, uh, of all three of those. Can, can you speak to the development of kind of the, the, the software uh, team that you have there? You've got a thousand people in cloud, you're contributing more to, to, to what's OpenStack. You know, is, uh, out of the thousand, I mean, is that 90% software people or, you know, wh wh where, does, where does kind of the, the, the software mojo fit into HP? Okay. So first of all, uh, we have a large, large software organization developing software tools and, and, and orchestration, which is separate from cloud, but part with cloud, things like cloud service automation and all our other uh, platforms. So HP's got a very large software business on its own, which is unrelated specifically to cloud. Um, in the cloud space, uh, we have, uh, we don't break out the numbers, but you know, I would say that I have probably twice as many engineers working on cloud today as they did a year ago. And I'm not stopping. So you should assume that, you know, uh, you know, we are sort of the open source um, destination. For someone who wants to work on open source on cloud, you know, we are a destination company because you get to work on the latest stuff with support and you get to be involved in the latest technologies, whether it's OpenStack or Cloud Foundry and so on. And, and you're going to see increasingly uh, our participation there just to continue increasing. So I can't break out the numbers to you, but I would just say that we grew significantly last year and we're on the same trajectory. Sark, talk about the operations compared to uh, where they were last year. I see a thousand people working for you. You're an ops guy. You like to run, run, run the trains over there, make them on time for everything else. And you got uh, Martin Fink involved now. He's an open source guy. Talk about the balance between your operational agenda and your plan versus the, I call it the, not the R&D, not that he's an R&D guy, but like uh, it's an open source kind of ethos that, that Fink has. And, and how is that culture being bl bled into the operations? Because you know, HP is, has a cadence, uh, you know, good customer satisfaction, but it's HP specific. Now you have this open source ethos coming into the culture. Talk about that blending. How does that, sure. how's that going? And then give us a, a, a view inside HP. Sure, so <laughs> first of all, over the last year, uh, we have you know, helped, we, we brought in some, some big hitters in terms of open source and cloud, like Bill Health, right? who did a lot of stuff in Azure, but before that was a big open source guy. We brought in other people uh, and so on. And then on top of all that, right, uh, we moved under Martin Fink, who has always been, quote unquote, an open source guy. And that's been great because, you know, we were sort of, our, our, we are sort of driving open source, not only in terms of this, but also in terms of how it drives into the organization, into HP, in terms of the whole culture of, hey, let's open source this, let's do it as part of the community, as opposed to we'll sit in some dark room and do it. Yeah. So I think you know, Martin has pushed a lot on that. I think Martin, when he came in, you know, initially said, let's make sure everything is upstream. Let's make sure push, you know, we push all that uh, in that way. Now, you know, uh, from an operational standpoint, we're still running a company, uh, but we are separate from HP's sort of, you know, HP's divided into different pieces. We have our own cadence. Uh, we have our own release cycle. Part of the move to open source is also doing CI, CD, like we talked about when we did Helion. We're going to release something every four or six weeks. Um, so I think it's blended well. 
uh, in terms of that. I think that there was latent open source stuff going on in HP anyways, but I think now there's sort of a, a thing on it that says, okay, yeah, this is right, this is the way to do it. You know, Eileen did a lot of pioneering work on, yeah. on how to drive open source. So I think it's all just now come together. Before it was sort of in different pieces. And, and she was awesome yesterday, and talking about the Linux board and her role also here. Um, I then asked the indemnification question. I mean, obviously, uh, that's a huge deal, and you guys have some history there. Talk us through how that went down internally, and, and why is this indemnification uh, guarantee, I guess, for lack of a better word, important for customers? Look, we, we, our view is we want to make it as frictionless as possible for people to, to adopt OpenStack. And you know, we have a history, right, from indemnifying Linux back in the day when People were trying to stop Linux from adopting, and so we looked at this and said, as we thought about, as we said about going to Helion, we said, what are the things we can remove? What are every possible barrier we can remove for people to think twice before using open source? And while open source is very popular, there are still people, when you talk to customers, they're like, well, what about this, what about that? It, let's take it off the table. So that you saw that as a in sales inhibitor, basically. Yeah, it made people think twice. Not everywhere, but we definitely had a lot of customers come to us and say, and because we have a history of indemnification, they said, hey, you indemnified Linux, why won't you indemnify this? So we said, let's just take it off the table. How does that work? Is it like a legal document? <laughs> is it the dual source? Is it the source code? That, what, what specifically are you indemnifying? HP's products relative to the OpenStack? Is it certification involved? If you, again, this is, there's a legal document that explains <laughs> it, and I'm not going to, I'm not, you know. But basically the risk, from a de-risking. The basically point is if you use a licensed version of HP OpenStack, and you sign the identification agreement, separate agreement you have to sign, then if a third party sues you because of violations relating to, to um, open source, and proprietary, so forth, that specifically not, I mean, if you use it for something else, it's your business, then we will indemnify you. The same way that the, those you know, jokers from SEO were suing people for using Linux, yeah. the same idea. It kind of it freezes the market, basically. So you essentially take that de-risk, take the de-risk. Take it off the table. Don't okay. worry about it. If they come after you, HP's here, we're a big company, $100 billion, we'll take care of it. You can go focus on your business. Talk about the OpenStack uh, progress so far. I mean, obviously it doubled since Portland almost, at 4,200 people. Some thought there might be more here. Um, a lot of activity. What's your take on the evolution of OpenStack? Early days, still, you know, national anthem hasn't been sung. Is it, are we in an inning? I mean, come on, what, no, tell I, us your take We've on made that. progress. Again, I think, I think it's grown up. Um, I think we're, 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 we're way out of the, you know, we're probably in the fourth inning maybe. Um, you know, the difference I think, again, the, the, oh, the question is where's the gravity of OpenStack, right? I would say that the gravity was always been with, oh, this is cool, this is the developers, look what I can do. The gravity now is moving more and more to, okay, I'm a customer, I'm making a strategic choice, make sure that this is a good choice. And so that's where the gravity is moving to, but I think this is an important time for OpenStack over the next you know, 12 to 24 months. You know, I want to see more and more uh, users in these conferences, and especially speaking, not only attending, but speaking and talking about what's important. Like we had AT&T talk about it, you know, users. That's sort of the transformation, right? When you look at the curve, you start yeah. off as this really, really cool technology, everybody's excited. And then, oh, we need to use this. Okay, so there's all these other things we didn't think about. So I think we're there. I mean, with Ice House and now with, with Juno, we're getting there. You know, Ice House, we finally have installation. We have better on upgrades. There's some instrumentation. Things have gotten better. But we're now at the point of, okay, now this is great technology. How do I make it usable for mere mortals? Talk about the, uh, the CIO. We, I told the CIO last year and they're like, uh, oh, I love OpenStack. I'm like, do you know what OpenStack is? Oh no, I just love it because I don't want to use Amazon. And that was a legit answer, you know, so, so that was last year. So this year you're starting to see a little bit more of more answer, more coherent around, I want to look under the hood. What are, what are you hearing from CIOs? Why are they so into OpenStack? Is there a particular uh, affinity towards anti-Amazon or is it more of I just want to have some legacy integration, there's some compliance issues. What, what is the main driver for Open, OpenStack's success? Or I should say the, uh, the demand to learn yeah, more. Yeah, so like I said, I think it, 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 we, should be, we, we shouldn't be looking at it from OpenStack out, we should be looking at it from their initiatives in, right? So the CEO, under pressure to move faster, you know, drive faster innovation, have more flexibility, deploy applications faster, all these beautiful things. So then you look around and he says, okay, how do I do that, right? So, you know, there's Amazon or those guys, but then they have their dynamics. First of all, public cloud, as we know, if you're a big company, is very, very expensive. Second of all, it's got its own challenges, and most of these have hybrid. So he says, okay, how do I do a private cloud? He looks at his private cloud, he said, okay, what's available in private cloud? 
and then he hears about this thing. Okay, so you know, there's all kinds of proprietary stacks, but people are trying to get away from proprietary. And he says, oh, there's this open stack thing. What is that? And he says, okay, well, you know, that's the most popular non-proprietary solution. And that's how he gets to start talking about OpenStack. And then they start digging and saying, okay, well, who else is deploying? Who are vendors I can talk to? How do I get educated? And so on. That's typically the path. Now, before, it was like, what is OpenStack? Now is like, is it ready for prime time? So we've improved. Next year, I would like it to be, okay, what's the biggest installation? And you know, when can I deploy it? Yeah, and, and some groove swing on some use cases. Exactly. Okay, final question for you. Share with the, the audience in your own words. Why is this year so important uh, in the industry and OpenStack? Why is all the buzz around all this, you know, all these forces coming together, tectonic shifts, obviously cloud mobile and socials on everyone's mind. Well, what's, what's, what's really happening in your own words? Well, I, I don't think I'm saying anything new to people that the world is moving to cloud. And a lot of cloud will be private or hybrid. That's a fact. And OpenStack looks like it has the opportunity and a great opportunity to be the technology to do that, and so that's amazing. I mean, if you think about back a few years ago, you know, we have everything set up for our success. We just have to execute. Okay, we're here inside theCUBE at the OpenStack Summit. Uh, Sargalai, Senior Vice President, Chief Operating Officer, HP Cloud, thanks for joining us. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you, great to be here. <laughs>